Girlfriend, how could you let them treat you so bad? Let's talk. <laughs> What's up, everybody out there? How you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in over here to Pippi's Point of View, and I'm yours truly, Pippi, and we're talking about R&B divas. The R&B diva I'm speaking about today, or talking about rather today, is George Spinderella Irby. She has a book out. It's called I Still Say Yes. We know George Spinderella Irby from the group Climax, the all-woman band Climax. Joyce Spinderella Irby. She was a member of that group. She's a singer, songwriter, producer, musician, and she's a manager as well as an entrepreneur, but she's a manager. And that's what I want to focus on in this particular commentary, talking about Joyce Spinderella Irby of Climax and her relationship with the Dallas Austin. That's right, the Dallas Austin that we all know, you know, who has produced hits for Boys to Men and TLC. Whew. I have known of this story maybe for a couple of years, meaning that I knew that Joyce and Dallas Austin had a, like an artist producer, artist management contract. I knew of that. And I also knew about how they kind of split up. And I always thought it was very tacky and very shady. Now, <laughs> I also felt like, this is just me, okay, in my point of view, I also felt like at one point in time in all of this, and I, and I wonder why this guy's name never showed up, okay? I always wondered because, and I'm going to tell you who the, the, the guy's name in a minute. Because he's working with, Dallas Austin is working with boys to men. So when this guy's name never showed up in the midst of this, and I always kind of got a feeling that L.A. Reed name was the one pretty much being, you know, kind of thrown around in the midst of this. I always said, if we're talking about boys to men and we're talking about Motown, why is it that Michael Bivens' name, yes, that Michael Bivens of New Edition, and you guys know how I feel about my New Edition. I always wonder why Michael Bivens' name never showed up. It never came up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, get the book. <laughs> get the book. We're going to talk about that. I don't know how long this video is going to be. And I'm sorry because sometimes, you know, guys, I can get carried away because I have a lot in my head, I want to say. And I'm here to tell you, I can't speak as fast as I'm thinking. All right. So just bear with me. Be patient. But we're going to have to tackle this particular segment. All right. Of this book. You know, we're going to have to, you know. You know, we can't eat the elephant whole right here. We're going to have to really and truly just eat it a little bit at a time. All right. Here we go. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I think about how Joyce Irby in her book, her accounts, how she managed to. Well, her strategy, if you will, for building her career as a solo artist, right? And as a manager, producer, songwriter, because she does the same thing. And that of how she would do the same for a Dallas Austin, all right? 
So I'm going to repeat that so you understand what I'm just saying. <laughs> so we have George Venerella Irby, who is now branching off into managing other artists. She's also working on her own solo career. She is now kicked out of Climax. So she's now navigating that. And she has this artist, Dallas Austin, who she's also trying to, you know, manage and get him the opportunities as well. So it seems to me that what is occurring, according to her account, is that the people who she's introduced, uh, oh, take that back. The door she's trying to open up for herself by creating these relationships with these executives at these record companies, more than one. Notice what I said, these record companies. She's trying to do it for herself. And then she's bringing Dallas in. Okay? That's the first thing that I find interesting. And maybe it shouldn't have happened. Because it looks as if maybe Joyce, and just going by her book and her accounts, maybe she's a little naive about this as well. Because now she's moving up the, the chain, if you will. And now she's trying to court, if you will, not you know from that perspective, but she's trying to court these label executives, you know, to giving her these opportunities. And when she's introducing a young artist, a young producer such as Dallas Austin, and she's saying wonderful, great things about him, of course they're going to say negative things about him or they're not going to like him. Why? The difference is power to me. The difference is power, meaning that Here's a prime example of that power I'm going to say. We're going to use these artists and these people whose name I just brought up. I went into bed that a producer-songwriter relationship such as L.A. Reid and Babyface can get an artist signed, sight unseen, as well as unheard. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Because they just command that type of power and respect. And they have that kind of uh, legacy, if you will. They, 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 have, they have the career, you know, uh, they have the career hits. You understand what I'm saying? They, they have created that for themselves. So if L.A. Reid and Babyface says, you know what? I have this new artist and this new artist's name, <laughs> Peppy. <laughs> You know, and hey, he's going to be the next best thing, so on and so forth. You know what? We're going to sign. We're working with him already. The record is pretty much done. Hey, let's do the paperwork right now. They're going to do that. I'm not even in the room. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, it ain't even heard anything. But it's baby face. It's L.A. Reed and it's baby face. No one, I don't think, is probably for the most part is going to turn down L.A. Reid and Babyface for the most part. Even if they feel like the artist is not a good artist, they know that somehow or another L.A. Reid and Babyface is going to make it work, even if they're shrugging their shoulders at it. Like, mm. Because trust me, <laughs> L.A. Reid <laughs> and Babyface have probably worked with some people <laughs> that some people in the industry have said, nah, okay, not really a singer. Not, not, but, but hey, we know we can get some hits because it's L.A. Babyface. And so now Joyce finds herself in that world. She's creating, she's trying to create that world for herself. She's trying to open up doors for herself. So first of all, she is a new artist, or let's just say a fledgling artist. She just now got to the point where they are creating hits for themselves and they're seen as such. Right. But now they're about to branch off and do other things. So now that they now she I'm saying they I'm talking about the ladies, she and Bernadette, but just the ladies in the group. But let's just say when I say they, I mean, they as in 
Joyce and Bernadette, now they have to go out and conquer this world for themselves. Hmm. So I can see these executives saying, okay, Dallas, 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 Dallas okay, what's up with that? We, we, we don't care. I mean, he all right, I guess, I, I, we, whatever. And he could very well be a great artist, a great producer. You can be have great music, so on and so forth. These people can hate on you. They can hate on you. They can say, no, we don't like it. And you can be good. And it's the same thing with Joyce. She finds herself somewhat in this world as well. So what she's trying to do for herself, she's trying to do for Dallas. And it looks like to me, from her book, the way I'm reading it, or understanding it, comprehending it, is that as she is as she finds herself in the the these executives' uh, uh, rooms, homes, wherever, she is also trying to get Dallas there as well. And of course, she's going to want to take up for her artists, right? And say, well, now he's great, so on and so forth. He's going to do, you know, great things. I can see it in him. When I think about this relationship between her and Dallas in this very beginning stage, you can look back at it and you can, you know, say different things about it now. To me, I don't think if he's my artist, I don't know if I'm willing to introduce him to these people. He's my artist. And if he's a producer and I am an artist, then I would like to think, wait a minute, hold on. I, forget managing your career at this moment in time. You're my producer. And you are going to produce exclusively for me, Right. And for any other artists that I bring into, you know, our camp, that's how I think that I would see it. Do you understand? And at this moment in time, I'm not necessarily thinking that I'm trying to introduce you to an L.A. Reed and a baby face. A Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Now, I can say this, honestly. I don't know. I feel... Yeah, I'm saying it. I feel comfortable, honestly, in saying that you probably, it probably would have been good for you to introduce them, him to Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Because one thing I can say, I, from a an artist standpoint, like you don't hear bad things about Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. You just don't. You, I mean, you just don't. And I don't know of any artist, for the most part, who have had or said they have had bad experiences with Jam and Lewis. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm. Now, Sherelle and Alexander O'Neill have spoken about it, but they have spoke about it from a point where it's more like, well, if we don't work with them, we don't have a career because people look at it like, well, y'all Jam and Lewis artists, you know, like they have... Cultivated your sound. Y'all got hits after hits with them. And we're not touching it unless it's Jam and Lewis. Do you understand? So they are on the other side of it. Like they can't work with anybody outside of Jam and Lewis. Okay. So that probably would be the only fall or, or the only yeah negative part about the Jam and Lewis story. Now, from what I understand about uh, Jim and Jam and Terry Lewis is they also have what is called a handshake deal. You know, they've talked about this years ago. They don't have a contract between the, uh, the two of them unless they have one now. But from my understanding, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis pretty much says you don't know who wrote the song and who produced the song, you know, because... Our relationship is we're going to split everything down the middle and call it a day. We, 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 it is what it is. And it's pretty much a handshake. So that seemed to work with Jam and Lewis. Do you understand what I'm saying? But L.A. Reed and Babyface, I mean, 
I'm sorry. We, I'm just going to say it. And maybe, maybe they didn't have these kinds of dealings in the past. Okay. Because we're talking about, well, I don't know. Because we go back to 1980, what, maybe 86, 1986, 1985, 1986, you know, when somehow or another they're interacting with Pebbles and Pebbles comes along and she wants the song Girlfriend and they done promised it to uh, Vanessa Williams. And so Pebbles ends up offering more money and, and putting in uh, other things to sweeten the deal, so to speak. And they hand it over to her, the song. Vanessa Williams, <laughs> they speak to uh, Babyface and them for a while behind it. You know, she was not, even though she went on to have a great career, you know, <laughs> musically. So what I was about to say is I was about to say that I'm not sure if L.A. Reid and Babyface ever had these kinds of things in their career in the earlier part of their career, but now I, it, it, so I'm just saying you know, it's my point of view, that's the name of the show Paper's point of view, it's just my point of view it's my opinion, but I just don't think that I would have just introduced them to anyone like that as well now there is a lot of names, and I'm talking about big time names that is being brought up in this story right now. Okay, so that's why I want you to go get this book. You have Gerald Busby, his name that's being mentioned in this uh book, and it looks like maybe there could have been something more to their relationship, but at the moment in time, maybe it's not what is kind of looking like it's trying to be, but it looks like maybe somehow or another, uh, Jared Busby probably assisted in getting Dallas <laughs> away from uh, Joyce's contracts, if you will. Read the book. Because Jared Busby now is going over to Motown and he's kind of persuaded Joyce to go over to Motown and arrive by sort of way. Basically said, I'm going to offer you a recording contract, but don't leave Climax. All right? I'm going to leave it there. Read it for yourself. Go in. Okay? Then you have what looks like doors are opening up for her at Motown because now you have Dallas, who is now going to be working with you know, Michael Bivens' uh, group, Boys to Men. He started Biv 10, and Biv 10 is through Motown Records. It's distributed through Motown Records. So now Dallas Austin is working with this group. Babyface and L.A. Reed is a part of working with Boys to Men. So do you see kind of like where this is going? Now, I'm wondering at this moment in time, because I've heard a couple of stories. I don't know which one is true. I don't think they paid Dallas Austin a lot of money to produce Boys to Men. I don't. I don't. I, I mean, he, he was not paid a lot of money, you know, to to produce them. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got producers fees. OK, I don't think he was, you know, new artists. So you got new artists, Boys to Men. You have a new producer, Dallas Austin. Okay, so you can look at it right then and there. Just say, hey, this is how much we'll pay you, so on and so forth, and it is what it is. So everybody pretty much got their money, <laughs> you know, once the records came out, so to speak. I just don't know if I would have did that, Joyce. Now, I think I would have created an opportunity for him to develop my artist or to develop a sound for me. But, you know, now let's talk about Dallas. Okay, we didn't talk about Joyce. Let's talk about Dallas. It, this is from Joyce's 
point of view now in her book. So Joyce probably does not have a lot of money. Okay. She probably doesn't because she's just now making money in climax. And now she has these opportunities, you know, presented to her for her to do more. But obviously she's doing something over there to, you know, pay for Dallas Austin. She talks about, you know, you know, providing him with cars, so on and so forth. And it is what it is. So you would have to think at this moment in time when it comes to Dallas being a young you know, a person in trying to come into the business. I think it's safe to say at this moment in time, I'm not going to say he's naive. I'm not going to say that. I will say he's probably looking at which one is the best opportunity for me. So if, and not knowing the business as well. Okay. Well, this is an opportunity for me to work with this artist and to do this. Yeah, they paying me this much. I'm just going to throw out a number. Okay, they say they're going to give me $5,000. But you don't know. You're supposed to really probably be getting ten or maybe $15,000 for this. Okay? You don't know that. But that's how much they're giving you to do this. You see? So you probably can lose out on that end. But what you're looking at is a step where, hey, this is an opportunity for me, number one, to work. Number two, to make sure I can show people what it is that I can do. And then I move on to the next project. So when these things present themselves and you have someone, let's just say, as your manager, you know, Joyce, and she's saying, well, no, not... You can't do that. This is not good. We'll pass on this, so on and so forth. I would like to think, wait a minute, but I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm not saying he's saying that, but you have to look at it. Well, this is an opportunity for me. I'm hungry. Why not? I don't see anything wrong with it. And so now, if this opportunity is coming to you, now you have people in the industry that if you are my artist, and now you are around these movers and shakers, and I'm talking about the big wigs, okay? The big wigs. We're not talking about the middle people or the people who are trying to get in. We're talking about the big wigs who can easily come to you and persuade you by, you know, dangling the bells and the whistles in front of you, dangling the carrot in front of you and saying to you, hey, what it is and what it isn't, so to speak. Do you understand? And so if you have these major people coming to you, these heavyweights coming to you, and you see what opportunities that they can provide for you, can bring to the table, and you're looking at them and sizing up joys, I think it would be easier to say that you're going to go with them because they can easily size up joys and say, what, man, I mean, really? What can she do for you? Okay. I can look at your contract or talk to you about your contract or listen to you talk about your contract. And I can pretty much tell you that, no, you're not getting a good deal. This is not a good deal. With the mind frame of, I'm going to take from you as well. Do you see? I'm going to leave out that part. I'm just going to let you know right now that this is not good because I want to take you and, 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 and bring you over here so that I can make money off of you. So if I know that I can make money off of you, you better well, but you better make sure that I'm not going to say anything good about Joyce. It's just not going to work out that way. Girlfriend, how could you treat girlfriend? How could you let them treat you so bad? I'm talking about pebbles. Do you understand? So now we like to talk about pebbles and all of that and make it seem like what it is and what it isn't. But Joyce Irby is in this story now. And you mean to tell me that Joyce has a similar story and pebbles have a similar story and everybody else has these similar stories going on? I'm just saying it is what it is. So I would like to think that, yeah, it, it makes sense in my head 
I mean, I'm working with Boys to Men. It's a new group. It's not the Boys to Men. It's about to become these the Boys to Men. But right now, I'm working with L.A. Reed and Babyface. I'm over here at Motown. Like this here, uh, Motown, the name alone carries weight, right? L.A. Reed and Babyface name is already carrying weight. We know what they've done. And so now I'm going to be a part of that. So I would like to think that he would listen to them and get you out of the picture. It just makes sense in his world. I'm just going to probably where I'm going to eat. But now Joyce did say something in this book that it still haven't come up yet, but I'm, 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 I'm reading. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. <laughs> this is how much I got left to read. And it hasn't come up yet. So I'm about to, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to come up. She says something about Dallas leaving a note in the studio somewhere talking about the next move swing in 10 minutes or something like that. I have to go back and find it. But she made that comment in her book saying that Dallas was talking about her mood swings. And I do recall that Dallas saying in an interview, he was just basically like, well, I don't want to work with you anymore. I just don't want to work with you anymore. So it, it you know, he cuts himself, you know, pretty much out of the deal. Doesn't want to work with her. But I'm wondering did that have a lot to do with it? What had what what was it that asked from Dallas' perspective that he said he didn't want to work with her? And I'm looking for it to be kind of like a moody type situation, you know, like, hey, you're just difficult to deal with, so on and so forth, but I'm not getting that yet. It's not coming up. And I haven't seen in interviews. I have to go and I maybe just intentionally. Look at some uh, interviews of Dallas Austin to see what he says about his relationship with her, you know, for the most part. But he goes on to work with them. Hmm. So there is a settlement. You guys have to read the book for yourself because I'm definitely not going to talk about this. But there is a settlement. And I was kind of shocked and surprised about the settlement. Again, Pebble said the same thing. Pebbles really and truly said, you know, she was like, hey, I did not get anywhere near the amount of money I was supposed to get. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Pebbles uh, said that for sure. She mentioned a number. She never mentioned, mentioned how much she was given, only that it was not where she should, what she should have gotten received. But if I'm not mistaken, she said that she received, and I know for a fact, a million dollars per letter, TLC. So that's $3 million. The T, the L, the C. She received a million dollars per letter. For, you know. You know, I want to talk a little bit more about a lot of things as it relates to just the music industry in its dealings and how it, it, it it's just a whole lot of things I would like to uh, just talk just in general about. Because talking about this, it just makes me think about a lot of things right now. Hmm. So there you have it. You have this Joyce and this Dallas Austin uh, relationship, you know, right now it's, it's party. It's, it, it's, it's no longer where it is, you know, and you have these executives who are pretty much, it looks like are in the know about what's happening. They're in the know. I don't know, you guys. Tell me what you think. I'm going to leave this video at 30 minutes, and I think I'm going to just post another video about, you know, some things that just came up that I, I, I want to talk about. Anywho, so if you stuck around for this uh, uh, 
part of the <laughs> of my commentary, then I think it's only you know appropriate for me to go ahead and ask you, hey, if you like the channel, you like what I'm talking about over here, then you know, why don't you go ahead on and hit the subscribe button? I appreciate you guys a lot out there. Or tell me what you think, leave a comment, you know, or you want to share the video, share it, you know. And also, too, over here, I believe in putting your behind where your heart desires to be. I hope you guys are doing that out there. And pretty much, hey, wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. All right. And also remember, whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always says to me, baby, remember, I love you, but God loves you best. I love you out there. I appreciate you guys so much. Make sure you're loving yourself, too, because how can you love somebody if you don't love yourself? I promise you, I used to hear that all the time, and it just never really resonated with me up until this point in time in my life. Love yourself, all right? And also, I'm looking forward to seeing you next video. And until then, you know what to do out there. You take care of yourselves, all right?